Welcome everybody to the talk about implementing of GNI in banking context. Uh, I will be speaking from practical and business perspective because currently I'm chief product officer of the company which created GNI solution for the bank. Uh, and uh, we actually had a lot of communication with the banks around uh, of uh, leveraging AI in uh, banking environment. Firstly, we'll discuss about context and use case uh, overall. Then we'll go into a short description of the product. Then we'll have a deeper dive of technical aspect of product, uh, um, how, how uh, was it created. And uh, then we'll discuss the frequent concerns of the banks of launching such product within the banking environment. And in the end, we'll speak about the team which is required uh, to create such kind of solution. So let's start. Uh, if we're talking about uh, potential market of software for the banks, it is really huge. It is uh, more than $4 billion. Uh, it is just uh, a service addressable market, but actually it, it is much larger. And uh, we believe that this market is growing. And uh, at this market, we focus on actually two solutions. Our company focus on two uh, problems. The first problem is that when you try to open account uh, in a bank uh, for your business, this takes a lot of time. Like according to our survey, it is seven days and more than uh, 400 pounds uh, per one uh, customer. Also, we know that there is a huge problem with transaction monitoring. And why is so? Uh, and according to our research, uh, if we look at the uh, onboarding process of business customers for the bank, you can see that some part of this process is very much automated. It is uh, like verification in registers, identity verifications, etc., etc. But there is a, a part which um, I colored green. Uh, which is very difficult to automate. And this part is related to two things. The first thing is uh, back and forth clarification. For example, you ask customer to provide a contract, customer provided to you, your manager read the contract and realized that the contract uh, is expired and you need uh, the fresh one. And you write a message, could you please provide the uh, new contract? And this usually takes two days. It is a significant amount of time. And secondly, uh, actually reading of the loan documents take a lot of time. Uh, sometimes uh, contracts provided to the banks uh, could be 50 pages, 100 pages. And uh, you, you can imagine how, how much time managers are spending on reading uh, such documents. And our product actually resolves this issue. And uh, it is not covered by the current players yet. And uh, what we're doing, uh, we launched uh, a system which have, uh, which is talking to customer in chat. It is AI um, powered chatbot. It collects documents. Uh, it extracts data from documents, um, does all the checks which are required and prepare compliance report. And uh, this compliance report looks uh, like this. You can see that uh, in this report, we provide all the discrepancies found in the documents, uh, all the issues, all communications uh, from customer uh, around it. And in the end, compliance officer, the person who is uh, making decision about uh, open account, just read our report and uh, takes decision to open account or do not open account. And it takes for them just uh, like 10 minutes, but not seven days uh, as it was previously. So this is our use case. This is the product we are offering uh, for the banks. And uh, this product, the benefits for the banks is, of course, cost reduction, onboarding speed, uh, customers are happy, and actually many, many others. And uh, this product is uh, like I will I will speak uh, a bit more uh, about how was it built uh, from maybe technical perspective. If we try to create such product just based on LLM, as you know, um, LLM will not 
have a structured discussion on some topic. Uh, even if we make very good prompts, very good structure, um, the uh, stability and uh, ability to control what is going on will be uh, very uh, low. That's why we decided that uh, we should have a hard-coded uh, dialogue scenario. So we should ensure that system will ask customer, uh, for example, for uh, registration documents for the company, uh, contracts, invoices, and if customer has some questions or would like to discuss anything around these documents, we'll support it. But it will be very uh, well-guided dialogue. And you can see that we have split uh, this flow into the small, um, small uh, steps. Like, for example, uh, we tell the task to LLM. Uh, customers asking us to provide some information about uh, requirements for the invoice. And uh, LLM just answer to this particular small question. And this is a small task we are giving to LLM. We are not trying to ask you to collect all the uh, data. And secondly, we use separate OCR serv service, like uh, the quality is higher and we do not use even uh, LLMs for this. And uh, we see that stability is very good for this. Thirdly, we do extraction. Uh, and also it is a separate task to, uh, to the model. We, uh, using OCR, we um, converted images to text. And now we use, uh, uh, LLM to extract from this text structured data we need to make uh, documents analysis. And finally, uh, we decided that it should be not only uh, LLM and uh, OCR, but also we would like to use APIs to enrich additional data uh, for this particular case. So we have integration with registers, for example, we are taking data from there comparing this with the data we extracted from the documents and uh, it, as the result we received very well uh, structured reports. Uh, if we're talking about uh, integration perspective, um, here it is actually a very important concern of the customer. Like when it is a bank they have very, um, very complicated uh, architecture and with a long history. And it is very difficult uh, and takes a lot of time to, uh, to integrate seamlessly in this kind of architecture. That's why for the proof of concept to make this uh, much faster, we, cre we created kind of fast integration approach. It looks like this. Uh, for example, bank uh, would like to open a business account for the customer and uh, customer usually fulfill uh, forms in the, on the website uh, of this bank in the authorized zone. And we have this, uh, uh, and we do not integrate into, um, uh, we do not integrate API uh, using API here. We just do, do an iframe integration. So we find some screen and put it there and it is very fast. Uh, secondly, uh, Second approach is that our service, which is actually creating all of this, uh, which is in the cloud, after user talks to uh, potential customer of the bank in uh, iframe chat, which is actually our chat, we create a report and we send this report through email. Uh, very straightforward. We can do it, of course, through API, but as I mentioned that uh, for the banks, it can take a lot of time. So uh, rolling out such kind of fast uh, API takes one week. Uh, and uh, it, it is much, much more uh, interesting for the banks uh, to try our product. Uh, moving on, I mentioned that uh, we, we used to face different concerns uh, to LLMs and to overall usage of GPT in the banking environment. And the first concern is, for example, that uh, most of people believe that OpenAI um, use 
client's data uh, to develop new models. And uh, we prepared special documents which confirmed that corporate API, uh, that OpenAI uh, declares that they do, need, do not use any uh, client's data uh, in corporate API and is protected by agreements and is protected by uh, uh, all necessary uh, policies. And we show this to uh, to the customer, and usually this helps. Uh, secondly, um, many people still believe that chat box uh, are not reliable. For for example, I have heard such concern. Yes, yeah, I like your solution; it's great, but uh, we like this part when you are checking the documents, making uh, compliance checks. But this chat is I, like I personally don't like chats, uh, chat bots. Um, uh, can you please implement you know, this kind of dynamic form where a customer can fulfill some information and uh, get the response, but not in chat? Also, very, very uh, interesting concern because people still see that chatbots uh, are not reliable. And this is true, actually. And uh, what we can do here, um, as I mentioned, that uh, firstly, we make, uh, made our chat very structured. Also, we limited uh, answers to internal database. So if uh, our chatbot answering to customer, it is not using any information from the internet. It uh, uses information from, uh, from the data source, which is checked. And we are sure that there will be no hallucinations uh, around it. Also, we are adding where it is possible. We are adding some uh, hard-coded logic and uh, quick buttons which can uh, skip chat communication where it is not necessary. So I would not say that we have kind of clear chat. It is mix of chat and hard-coded logic, and uh, this helps with banks uh, when we are trying to convince them that this product is uh, good enough. Number three is the quality of of course uh, from the beginning people uh, people remember that uh, if we what to, if we're talking about uh, uh, machine learning uh, when you need to read uh, when you need to read any new document uh, with a high quality you need to train model on thousands and thousands uh, samples of such documents and they do not understand that situation has been changed and actually, um, you do not need so huge uh, train data to uh, to have a good quality. And we actually support our sales materials with the results of the testing. And uh, we um, suggest them to try their own documents. Uh, and after they are trying this, usually this helps. And uh, number four, I also I already mentioned it, but maybe I'll bore it a bit more. That uh, of course banks uh, afraid of hard integration and for proof of concept they would like something small, what they can try, and uh, we created this kind of quick integration scheme. And also, secondly, uh, we s started integrations with the b large CRM and compliance case management systems, like, for example, uh, Salesforce. And uh, banks uh, which are using Salesforce, uh, when they uh, think about integration and when they understand that this one will be, that our product will be part of this Salesforce flow, it is much either easier for them to take this decision to get our solution. And now let's move to the uh, to the team. Uh, I, I, like, of course, it could be different team working on such project, but I would like to mention a few mission critical roles. I think uh, they are necessary for the success of such product. Of course, data scientist. Uh, and uh, when we're talking about generative AI, the role of the data, the data scientist has changed. Uh, it is already more prompt engineering, uh, already more about data extraction from the text, and it, 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 it shifted. Uh, but what is important, data scientists, from the knowledge perspective, they can structure working on the quality. 
Uh, and uh, I think this is uh, critical. They can create a great data set. They can ensure the quality of the data set. Uh, they can uh, ensure that the labeling process is set up properly and you can test uh, test it properly. And uh, I think uh, this role shifted, but it's still the core in this process. Second uh, role, uh, this is actually the new role and I have, I, have not, I have not heard about this role before this project, but uh, I think uh, it is kind of role just appeared the previous year. Uh, Q QA engineer with prompt engineering experience. It's a really interesting mix. Uh, the people who can test quality of responses of uh, LLMs on the high volumes. So they can use the, uh, they are very experienced in prompt engineering. They have all the tools which are required uh, and they can write actually these tools uh, for automation of such uh, QA. And uh, uh, this is new role really helping a lot to our product to ensure quality of chat dog. And number three, of course, backend developer um, who actually uh, currently can do prompt engineering as well, integration with the different models. Uh, but uh, important that this role should be combined with DevOps or it should be a separate person DevOps on the team because if you need high quality environment for the banks, um, your infrastructure should be really great. And I, I would personally recommend to have this role in your team. So to wrap up uh, about uh, my talk, uh, it is a huge case, a huge use case for Genia in the banks, and it is a great potential of, of implementation it. The main pain uh, for the banks actually working with a large volume of different documents and different processes. It is not only compliance process, could be a lending process, credit process, and uh, due diligence, legal process. So there are a lot of them. Uh, our company created chatbot which collects and verifies documents for the banks and we have experience in implementing it. Um, most of the banks do not fully understand the opportunities and uh, I, we see that banks actually risk averse organizations and uh, we, uh, we hear a lot of concerns and you should be prepared to um, argue and to provide uh, support that the risks are, are not so high. And as a hint uh, uh, to overcome the concerns that to prepare maybe responses to frequently asked questions and uh, second one you know, to have instant proof of concept so you can prove that your solution works well. That's it from my side. Thank you very much. And have a nice day. Goodbye.